how to add a painted effect to your images. Give it some depth. This is in Photoshop, PC or Mac. So let's go to the original image and go to select and all. So you select it all. Of course you can use shortcuts. I'm gonna go with the menus, but shortcuts obviously makes it slightly quicker. And then go to edit and copy. And I'm gonna create an alpha channel. So go to the channels panel and find all the panels in the window menu. So channels, go to the right side, and then you can go to new channel. So there you can create an alpha channel. So new channel, give it a name. I'm going with alpha one, perfectly reasonable. Click OK, and you can see you've got that there. Now paste that, edit and paste. So you've got that image now in there. Well, you can use it now when you go back to RGB. So RGB and go to select and load selection. So load selection and you can use the alpha one. Now you can see alpha one. Now at the moment, that's all that's in the list. If you've got multiple channels, additional ones, you'll see three or four there. And it's quite possible to create lots of different channels. And click OK. And it's a new selection. And make sure you go back to the RGB. That's a key thing because it's no use if you're using the alpha channel, you'll just be working with that instead. So RGB, and again, edit and copy. So you're gonna copy that selection, put it in the clipboard, pasteboard, and now select and deselect, or just leave it, doesn't matter, and then edit and paste. So now it's pasted as a layer. So you've got a layer, it's not much in there. You can see it's quite faint, very hard to see, a lot, bit of color there, but what you can also do is you can go to here, FX. So FX, just click there and go down to Bevel and Boss. You could do other ones as well. Now, depending on your setting there, you may have a different one. I'm just gonna go back to Inner Bevel. That's generally the default, I think. But you can make a default, of course, as well. So if anything you do here, you like that one, just make that as default or reset to default. Now I'm using this one and Smooth. And you can modify the depths. So you just change that and you can see as you do that, you get some depth in this image. You can see there's a bit more around there all the way across. You can modify the size, soften. You can also change the angle. Now it's not interactive, so you have to wait a few seconds for it to process. Now I think that gives it a lot of depth there. And you can of course change these ones as well. Glass contour, you can go through those. Some look really great. I think that one looks great. That's the third one. So once you've got that, See all those settings there, just click OK. And now that looks fairly reasonable. I think that's fairly reasonable as an endpoint, but I will do it a couple of times more. So I go to layer and flatten. Now you could just work with layer one thing, but it, always you'd have to go back to the background because there's not really much to select from that previous layer. So now I've got this background here. Now you could set up an action for this, so it goes through it, runs through it, window menu and actions and just record that. But again, you've got this alpha channel. So you select and again, select all, edit and copy. And once you've done that, go to the alpha one channel there and then paste into there. So edit and paste. And there you can see that one's got a little bit more depth. Now you haven't got another layer, so no layers, new layers are created at this point. Make sure you go back to RGB, and then again, select and load selection. And again, alpha one. You haven't got anything else, so let's just go with alpha one. Click OK, and it's a new selection again. And you can see now you've got a different selection than before. And again, exactly the same. Just go to edit and copy, and then edit and paste. So you're just pasting that there. And you can see again, you've got the layer one. Again, not much color there. You can't see much on it. But as soon as you go to say effects, just down here at the bottom, click there and bevel in boss. And again, you've got this. Now that I think looks even more amazing. You've got a lovely gel effect appearing there. And you can modify in a bevel and change the size. So you see as you change that, now that is interactive. Now I don't know why the angle isn't, you have to release it. But this, you can just move it, move it back and it does actually interactively change. This, for some weird reason, doesn't seem to be interactive. The preview changes, but it only appears once you release it in the actual end result, which is a pity. And it's a pity the preview is not particularly that great. You can also go here for different contours. 
Again, you can select different ones. Let's just go through them, just try them out. Maybe you might like that one, or this one, or that one. Whole range of different options. So I'm just gonna go with that one again. I think that's really good. But you've also got style, so you can go for bevel emboss, maybe pillow emboss. And again, depending on the angle, you can change the angle, might go that way, see it lighter, or maybe go there. I think that looks pretty good. Again, you can modify some of these other settings as well, change the screen, etc. Increase that, I think just about there. I think that looks just perfect. Click OK. And now, once you've got that, of course you can, again, flatten. So layer and flatten. Now the alpha channel, I haven't really been touching on that. So you've got the alpha channel, but you don't have to keep doing the selection from the image. You could use this now. So what you can do, you can go maybe image, and you could use filters as well as long as you've got the alpha channel set here. But you'll notice because it's grayscale that you've got very limited here. It's a pity really. I don't know why that some of these ones can't be more available, but of course the color information is not there, but it would still be nice if some of the features were there. But levels. So with levels, you can just tweak that. And you can see as you, oops, just move that closer and closer. I think that looks even more effective. I love that. That, I could flatten that, just use that as the image. That would be nice. I love that black and white effect. That looks really good, like a sea, sort of swirling waves. Sort of, I've been watching the, the rig on Amazon Prime, and wow, those waves just look amazing. <laughs> Someone's going to say, they are real waves. I don't know. They look, they, but still, I just think that's sort of like, like the similar sort of thing, those waves. I just love that sort of effect where the waves splash. And I think that's... Pretty amazing. Right, so let's just go back now, again, back to RGB. And this time, again, I can go to select and load selection. And again, you've got alpha one there. Click OK. And you can see now you've got probably a different design. And then again, edit and copy. Edit and paste. And then what you can do, again, make sure an RGB selected. If it's not, of course, you're working on something else you can always end up getting the effect on something else. So effects, bevel and boss, and you can see now you've got even more powerful depth there. I think that looks really good. And again, you can change these, tweak that. Literally infinite amount of combinations of gel effects that you can apply to this to create all kinds of something like that. You know, you might not like it, or you might think, you know what, that's pretty good. But the thing is you can always recolor it as well. So layer, and again, go down to flatten image, so it's all flattened, and then you can always tweak it. So you go to adjustments, maybe go for vibrance, hue saturation, just tweak the colors. Just boost it up, click OK, maybe go to filter, maybe stylize oil paint, maybe not very extreme. Just set the stylization really low, cleanliness fairly low, don't want it to blur too much, click OK, and you've got that end result. And again, image, adjustments, and vibrance which thing just gives that, that really garish colour there. Obviously, it doesn't look much like a C now, but of course, if you put a blue or something, layer on top of that, it would. At this point, you could use filters, maybe apply some modifications to the alpha channel, perfectly reasonable, but I'm going to finish. So RGB, go to image, adjustments, and maybe go with, or maybe go auto tone, subtle change, image, adjustments and levels. And you can tweak this up just a bit, just modify that, just closer there. And once you're happy with that, click OK. And that I think is my end result for this. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Always great to hear from you. Thank you much.